Greetings, this is Mr. Solomon here with another edition of Minecraft EDU at Village East Elementary. And today we're focusing on digital citizenship. This is our first video of the new school year, 2016-2017. So I am going to connect as a student so you can see exactly what kids will be seeing. So the class is uh, using the large workspace. I had customized this to have 32 areas and I've eliminated all but four. So there's one in each lane. So students will be able to choose which area they want to go to. I'm going to let them make all these decisions and then they'll right click and then they can be teleported to a, a workspace. And this is a workspace that is confined so there is no exit once they're in here. And then I added a create tables. Create tables is a mod that you can get that lets you uh, upload original artwork and then import them into Minecraft. So this is the blueprint that students are going to be using. So they have to recreate this area in their large flat workspace. And so in the chest over here I have all the materials that they'll need. The idea is to share the resources. So there's bricks, stone, cobblestone, fence, glass, pickaxes, hoes, there's bone meal to help things grow, there's uh, two sets of 12 plants, uh, one oak sapling, one door, and one bucket of water. So students are going to have to divide their work and decide who's going to work on what. And then they're going to build that. And then if they come over to the sign and right click, they can earn seeds. So the way that they're going to get seeds to grow their own food is to pass a digital citizenship quiz. So they got to get 85% or higher. So if they click on this link and then say yes, that will teleport them right to Common Sense Media that has assessments. So if they want to start easy and do a K2 assessment in third grade, that's fine. Or if third graders want to start at Unit 1 and fourth grade, they'll type their name. Okay, and then they'll hit Submit, and then you'll see that there's questions. So once they answer all the questions, there's 15 of them, you'll notice. Okay, and so if they score 85% or higher, I will give them seats. And so here's the certificate once they're done. So this uh, sample, they didn't earn any seats. So if they get 80% or higher, I'll have to decide on a number of seeds, maybe five per student. If they get 90 or higher, they'll earn 10 seeds. So they can start making their own food. And then once they come back, I will give them the seeds that they need. So they're going to need the seeds in order to survive. So the first day, they'll be in Minecraft EDU mode, which means they'll have no inventory, as you can see here and there's no death count, there's no starvation, there's nothing that really that can go wrong other than not sharing the resources. So the idea would be the students to divide their work. So one student would work on the farming area, two students could work on a house, two students could work on the brick house, uh, someone could work on the cobblestone, and then a couple students can just work on getting seeds for their group by passing the quizzes. And then I'll see a, uh, a printout to see how they did still working out how many seeds to earn for each one but I would figure maybe 10 seeds for a score in the 80s 20 seeds for scores in the 90s and then they should have enough food to grow their own bread make their own wheat turn the wheat into bread and sustain themselves and so this is kinda like their blueprint so they're learning 21st century skills of collaboration and communication uh, creativity and critical thinking because this really is going to take some problem solving on how to replicate these paths and if students go back to the spawn point you can see right here every area has the same thing so that was area 5 if I walk over to area 21 I can do the same thing so go to area 21 and it's the exact same instructions so here is the uh, wall that has the image of their blueprint and then they'll have the quiz and then they'll have a chest with their items. Not sure how many students will be working in each area. I'm going to let them choose that too. So the idea is to put that farming area right in front of this sign and it's a 50 by 50 uh, grid paper too. So we'll see how accurate they be and I'll start recording when students are in the room. Okay, so this is our class is now in the room working with a group of third graders. So we had fourth graders already. I'm going to get out of creative mode here and let's walk over to area number five and see how they're doing. So if I right click, the only thing that students will see is the eyeball for five. And then if we look, this has the largest amount of students. 
So here's their blueprint. Some kids are already building trees, which I see. Some are taking the quiz. But if I get into creative mode here, or build, and I jump up in the air, you can see how many students are in this area. So this has the largest number of students. And then if I go to another area, like 21, okay, let's go right across. If we look over in 21, we see that there's only three students in this area. So they're dividing themselves in different ways. Some areas have lots of students, some areas only have a few. But I look at this house and that is not six by six. So it looks like they are going to run out of bricks. And this is part of the learning process. So let's go back and check out the two other areas. We have 13 and 29. So if I zip ahead to 29, another example. It's only two students in this area. So it looks like they're dividing themselves unevenly, which is interesting. And I see someone that doesn't have a number after their name. So we'll have to work on that. More to come. Okay, we're here at day number two in our Minecraft EDU activity on digital citizenship. And uh, today I learned a lot of things from yesterday. So first I had kids today begin by completing a reflection form. So they can't even play Minecraft until they complete this section. Uh, what was your job? How did you do it? How did you use digital citizenship? What kind of 21st century skills students used and how they can explain how they used it? And then they submitted their answers. Once they submit their answers, then they can get into Minecraft. So what I learned yesterday is uh, students will now have to all take that quiz. So day one would be watching some movies to get background knowledge of digital citizenship. Day two, would every student will take a quiz, which I have in the game but I won't even start the game until day number three. So if you right click on here, this is the quiz that I shared yesterday. So as students take the quiz, they'll earn points. And we talked about what kind of points they can earn. So now each individual will get these supplies. So hopefully that will help get kids more of their materials. And then as we get into Minecraft, we can see how they're doing. So this group is at least putting the farm in the right area. They have two trees and they're starting over on their houses. If I press M, teleport to spawn, we'll check out the other areas. So then I had kids uh, choose their own areas again because it was uneven. Area 5, for example, has almost 10 kids in it, where area 29 only had two. So we talked about how to redistribute themselves into more even groups. That's something I would do differently next time. So the next time I do this, I will assign kids into a group so it's more even, or let them move into four corners of the rooms and let them choose their groups, but it has to be even. So if we look at area 21, they're finding that they're running out of materials quickly. So area 21 has a lot of people in it. That one's looking pretty good. We're now gonna check out the other two areas. And then we'll do this one more time. Tomorrow we'll turn on survival mode. So now they're going to have to grow their own food or else they will starve. Oh, here's our blueprint. Here's our farm. This group is at least starting on the right track. It doesn't look like the stone house and the brick house are directly across from each other. But that's getting there. And then let's check out area 29, the last one. 29 over here. So it's good to talk about the with the class what mistakes that I made, that I've learned. So I learned that everybody will take the quiz. I also learned that I will put students in their own groups. Thanks for watching.